First Minister, you haven't had a phone call with Liz Truss since she became Prime Minister. Of course, she said that you should be ignored, but did you expect her to take that literally? Uh, no, not really. Um, I should say, as far as I'm aware, it's not just me. I don't think she's uh, had a phone call with the Welsh First Minister either. Uh, certainly, she hadn't the last time I spoke to him. Look, it's just really unusual. Um, I've, Liz Truss is the fourth Prime Minister I've dealt with as, as First Minister. Let's be honest, we've got deep political differences, but you know, David Cameron was in office when I became First Minister. I think I spoke to him within hours of becoming First Minister. And then when Theresa May and Boris Johnson became Prime Minister, I, certainly within the first couple of days we had a, a conversation. So it's just unusual that Liz Truss hasn't decided to do the same thing. Why that is the case, lack of respect, arrogance, insecurity, who knows, that's for her and to how answer. how does she compare to the other three? Well, I... I don't really know her because I've not had that opportunity to engage. But as the rest of the public can see, um, the decisions she's taken in the first few weeks of her tenure as Prime Minister have been utterly catastrophic to the economy uh, and to people across the country who are paying the price of her decisions in higher mortgage rates and borrowing costs generally. Next week we have the Supreme Court hearing on another independence referendum. If the Scottish Government loses uh, that case, will you stand down as First Minister? No. Will you stand in the next Holyrood elections? Uh, that's my planning presumption, yes, but you know, I, I try to answer these questions like a human being rather than a robot. That's four, still four years away. Uh, you know, very few human beings can say with certainty. Being First Minister is a massive job, massive responsibility, has a big impact on your own life, your family's life. I would owe it to the Scottish people to make that decision finally closer to the time. If I was to sit here right now and say, absolutely, no doubt, come what may, I'll be standing in the next Holyrood election, I think people would have a right to be aggrieved because it would suggest I wasn't taking the job seriously enough. But my assumption is I'll stand again and... I'll take that decision uh, finally as we get closer to that. Now, you've criticised the UK government uh, today for a lack of planning and basic communication on energy supplies uh, this winter. Are you launching a public information campaign on energy? Well, we have various uh, ways in which we try to communicate with the public around energy and other things. But can I just be clear here? I, I support Scottish independence and the Scottish government having all of these responsibilities. But energy is a reserved matter. Energy supplies but are, you are a reserved campaign? matter. We will communicate carefully um, and responsibly to the Scottish people uh, as we advise them over the winter. We shouldn't be in this position, though. The National Grid, helpfully, I think, issued its different scenarios yesterday. The, the best central scenario is that supply will de meet demand over the winter. But from a Scottish perspective, just take a step back from this. We are a net exporter of electricity. We already generate sufficient renewables to cover almost 100% of our electricity use. We've got vast renewable potential and yet we're in this position because we are part of a GB grid and are reliant on a, a UK government to take decisions around this of having soaring energy prices and uh, diminishing energy security. That says that there's a real problem with the way these decisions are taken right now that needs to be fixed. But you're not committing to a, a communications campaign? We we will have communications campaigns, yes, I'm, I'm simply not, you know, I don't want to sit here and say it will take a particular form, but we will communicate, as we did throughout the entirety of COVID, we will communicate openly and candidly with people about the pressures that are being faced and what we are asking people to do. Generally speaking right now, not just because of these potential supply issues, but because of environmental issues because of the need to for people to reduce energy costs. We should all be thinking about energy efficiency and how we use energy responsibly. COP26 was held in Scotland. Do you think the King should attend COP27? I think it would be a good thing for the, the King to be at COP27. He was at COP26. The Queen obviously wasn't able to be there personally, but she gave a, a wonderful address to, to leaders. Um, and, you know, King Charles is somebody who has, out throughout his entire life, had a real concern for the environment. He's head of state for many different countries in the Commonwealth. Um, I think it would be entirely appropriate, should he want to, to be at COP27. And in an independent Scotland, who would be the head of state? You or... King Charles? Well, I, I think, you know, I don't want to personalise it firstly. It would be up to people in Scotland if we're independent to choose their government. But the position of my party is that uh, the 
the, the, what was the Queen and successors, now the King and successors, would remain head of state because Scotland would remain, remain part of the Commonwealth. Uh, but that would be something for future generations of Scotland, of Scots, to continue to decide whether they, they were comfortable with. But that is the position of my party. And is there a sense, almost eight years into your time as First Minister, that this abiding aim throughout your political career um, of leaving the UK, of Scotland becoming an independent country, is looking really quite difficult to achieve while you're in office? Um, no, I think Scotland is on a path to being independent. I hope that is sooner rather than later, because I think but that's in the interest of Scotland. Minister. Well, no, I, 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 well, I do think it is entirely possible that it will be while I'm First Minister. But actually, for me, that's not what is most important. It's not really, well, it's not, not really. It's, independence is not about the personality of who is First Minister. It's not about me. It's not about my predecessors in this job. It's not about whoever will come after me. It's about what is right for Scotland. And what is right for Scotland, in my view, is to be in charge of our own destiny as an independent country, like the 200 or so other independent countries across the world. I hope, not for my sake, I hope for the country's sake, that is within my tenure, because I hope it is soon. But that, for me, is not the most important issue. You know, who is First Minister when it happens? And in terms of your own future, will you go on and on? Um, that's not how I would choose to phrase it, because I, I, obviously the history of a, a leader using that phrase is not a happy one. Um, my planning assumption is that I will fight the next Scottish election as, as leader of the SNP and therefore seeking another term as First Minister. Mr Surgeon, thank you. Thank you.